Okay, here we're going to be looking at revenue as part of net income. And we'll be looking at operating revenue, or revenue that's earned from the company's normal course of business. And we're going to be looking at it in terms of either being a liability or an asset on our balance sheet. And we'll also look at how it affects cash here. So let's look at this first case here where we've got an unearned revenue or a would be called a def deferred liability. Now this is the case here where our customer pays us cash um, before we provide any uh, service or product to the customer. So we receive the cash up front. So in this case we would increase our unearned revenue let's say here by six thousand dollars. So we had the beginning of the year balance of twenty two thousand and then the end of the year balance here was twenty eight thousand. So we had a plus six thousand dollar increase in it. So in that case we would have received six thousand dollars from our customer up front here. Now as uh, time went on here we would have earned some of that revenue here. So let's just say uh, beginning of the year we had a $22,000 balance here and at the end of the year we had a $17,000 balance. So we had a decrease here of $5,000. Now that would we would debit our unearned revenue for that amount and then we'd recognize it here uh, as part of our net income on the income statement here. We credit our uh, revenue for $5,000. So that was a non-cash transaction here. In this case we receive the money up front from our customer and then we would have recorded it as an unearned revenue. Okay let's look at revenue here is derived from an asset and this would be the case here for an accounts receivable or some receivables account. Now this is where we provide the service or the product before we receive the cash. So let's look at the case where the beginning of the year, year here we had a hundred thousand dollar balance in it and at the end of the year there was a hundred and fifty thousand dollars balance. So we had a fifty thousand dollar increase in this accounts receivable. So in this case we had a debit accounts receivable by that fifty thousand dollars and then we'd go over here and increase our revenue account by that fifty thousand dollars. So that's something that we have earned at this point here but we haven't received it in cash yet. So that was a non-cash transaction. Now as time goes on here let's say that our customer paid us on that account here and let's say they uh, paid us ten thousand dollars. So looking at our um, balance here at the beginning of the year say we had a hundred thousand dollars and at the end of the year there was a ninety thousand dollar balance so it went down by ten thousand dollars so what we do in this case we'd reduce our accounts receivable by ten thousand dollars and then we'd recognize our cash amount here for ten thousand dollars so you can see here in this case the uh, revenues here was increased um, initially here by the amount that we uh, product or service that we provided for our customer but it wasn't uh, paid for until later here. So again this revenue is here. Uh, these are non-cash transactions when it comes to accruing our liabilities or our assets here when it comes to these uh, unearned revenues and these earned revenues. All right, let's look at expenses that are recognized in net income. And they could be derived either from a liabilities account here or from a NAS account. And then we'll look at how they affect cash. So let's first look at the liability side of the equation here. And that would be our payables. In this case, it would be an accounts payable. That's where we receive a product or a service before we pay for it. So let's look here where we had an increase during the year. We started out here at $100,000 in the beginning. And at the end of the year, there was a $115,000 balance. So it increased by $15,000. So we increase our accounts payable by that amount. And then we would go and recognize it in expense here by that amount of $15,000 thousand and that would be a non-cash expense. And then later on when we pay down on this accounts payable or we pay for that product or service we would decrease the accounts payable by that amount and then also decrease our cash amount by that amount here and that we're looking at twenty five thousand dollars in this case and that would uh, be looking here where at the beginning of the year we had a hundred thousand dollar balance and at the end of the year there was seventy five thousand so it was reduced here by twenty five thousand dollars. 
Okay, let's look at an expense that would be derived from an asset. And for example, here we'll use inventory or prepaid expense as our asset. And this is where we'd pay cash for the inventory or the prepaid expense before we'd use it or recognize it as an expense on our income statement. So going down here, looking at our example here, say we had a beginning balance of $100,000 in inventory, and at the end of the year, it increased to $120,000. So we had a $20,000 increase here. So what we do is we'd increase our inventory account by that amount, and then we would reduce our cash, or we would have paid for it in cash here by that amount of $20,000. And then later on, when we actually use this inventory, we'd reduce our inventory by, uh, say, $12,000 here, and that would be shown here where we had a beginning of the year balance here of $100,000, and then at the end of the year it was $88,000, so we had a reduction here of $12,000 in inventory. So we'd decrease our inventory account by that $12,000 here, and then we'd recognize it here as an expense on our income statement here, and that would be a non-cash expense. All right, to summarize, where revenues would be recognized as part of net income, they either could be derived from a liability account or from an asset account. And when they're derived from a liability account, that's where we receive the cash payment before we provide the goods or service. And then when we do provide that good or goods or service, then we would recognize it uh, as a revenue. And then uh, for the asset account, that is where we provide the goods or service before we receive the cash. So at the time that we provide this goods or service, we'd recognize it as revenue. And then when we uh, receive payment on it, then we'd recognize that amount as cash. Okay, to summarize expenses that would be part of net income, they can either be derived from a liabilities account or an asset account. And in the case here of a liabilities account, that's where we uh, receive the goods or service and recognize it as an expense before we pay for it. And then once we pay the cash for that goods or service, then we would reduce this liabilities account here and also reduce our cash account. And then in the case here as, a, as an asset, and let's use it here as an inventory for example, this is the case where we'd first purchase this uh, asset amount here, and that's where we would reduce our cash by the amount of that purchase. And then once we begin to use this asset or this inventory in this case, we'd reduce this asset account, and then we'd re recognize it as expense over here uh, as part of uh, net income.